when care is pressing on you down a bit. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns. Every one of us sometimes learn. And many failures turn about when we might have won if we had stuck it out. Don't give up. The pace seems slow when you may succeed with another blow. Success is very turned inside out, the silver tint of a cloud of doubt. You can never tell how close you are. It may be near or seems so far. So stick to the light when you stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse, you must not quit. All of us grow weary from time to time in our lives. Yes, sir. From the daily activities of whether you're a leader or a follower, whether you are an employer or an employee, whether you are a parent or a child, whether you are a teacher or a student, whether you're a husband or a wife, whether you're a coach or a player, whether you're a minister or a member, all of us grow weary. We sometimes get discouraged and disheartened. The times and when we get dispirited and downcast, we become depressed because we feel like everybody is dumping on us. Yeah. Growing weary is a process that happens when a dedicated, determined, and committed person realize that after an extended period of burning both ends of the candle and realize he or she has burned out, worn out, and simply given up. Physically exhausted, uh -huh. mentally, emotionally drained, financially broke, busted, and disgusted, relationally discombobulated and confused, spiritually riding on empty. Wow. Brothers and sisters, growing weary is when your faith has been tried, tested, and tempted with trials and tribulations and turmoils, as well as trouble in your life. Well, growing weary are trying when you're doing the best that you can and feel like you're the only one trying. Right. Brothers and sisters, if it gives you any comfort or consolation, great people of the Bible suffered the bout of weariness. Abraham in Genesis 15, Jonah in Jonah chapter 4, Elijah in 1 Kings 19, King Saul in 1 Samuel, Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah, who wanted to quit, who wanted to give up, but he said, is this like fire? Shut all up in my bones. David in the psalm, he said in Psalms 38, verse 6 through 8, he says, I am troubled, I am bowed down greatly, I go moaning all day long, I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Yes, Today's yes. text is from the Apostle Paul, the New Testament writer, who understands that in the body of Christ, there will be some that are stronger than others. In the body of Christ, there will be some that are faster than others. Not only are there some that are stronger than others, faster than others, but there will be some that are more faithful than others. Yes, sir. He begins to unravel the book of Galatians as an apostle and he shares with us the summary of the whole book that talks about his personal dilemma and their challenges with his apostleship. Then he secondly talks about his prophetic doctrine and the assurance of the things that they were going through. But today we want to talk about not just his personal dilemma or his problematic doctrine, but his practical disciplines, meaning that he provided for them some applications that were principles, principles of truth that has a multiplicity of meaning. And so he shares with them some instructions that they were to take as he began to instruct the ones who were strong as to how to help others through their daily duties and their words of encouragement. It begins in chapter 6 per our context, and he discussed restoration after the weight of sins that do it so easily beset us. Well, he talks about the signs of strength and maturity as to how well we deal with burdens. Because all of us experience burdens in our lives. Burdens are challenges that we carry. Burdens are heavy load 
that we are lifting. Yes. Burdens are trials and tribulations that we are transporting. Yes. Burdens are struggles and stuff that we are supporting that's supposed to be supporting us. Right. Right. And in fact, we began to share that how we ought to look at burdens and that burdens ought not be obstacles of destruction, but they ought to be opportunities for development. Talks about it in James, how we ought to count it all a joy when we fall into divers and different temptation, knowing that the trying of our faith will work patient. It will work out for our good. So he began to tell us about three things when it comes to a burden in our life. Do I have anybody in here ever had burdens in their life? Yes. Is somebody going through some burden this morning? You feel, you feel like the weight of the shoulder, the weight of the world is on you. You were on top of the world, but now it seems like the world is on top of you. So, 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 so. He began to share with us three things. That number one, burdens, some burdens ought to be shared. He said that in verse 2, he says that we ought to carry for one another burdens. We ought to carry one another burdens. So burdens ought to be shared and nobody ought to go through what they're going through by themselves. He not only talks about burdens being shared, write this down, write it down. He talks about some burdens ought to be shouldered. That, that, that many times we want to place our burden on somebody else, but really we need to, amen, 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 lay in the bed, amen, that we made. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. We, 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 we have to shoulder our burden. In other words, in verse 5, it says, carry your own burdens. Not only ought we also to, here it is now, amen, share our burdens, but we also carry our burdens. Then we also ought to cast our burdens. Cast our burdens. We ought to cast our burdens. Here's number three, here's number three, because some burdens ought to be shared. Shared, shared, that's H E D, ought to be shared. Some ought to be shared, some ought to be shouldered, and others ought to be shared, meaning that you ought to cast your burdens on the Lord. In fact, the scripture said, lay aside every sin and the weight that do it so easily beset us. He's a burden barrier and a heavy load sheriff. In fact, the songwriter used to say, since I laid, there'll be out somebody here. My burden's down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens ought to be shared, they ought to be shouldered, but they ought to be shed. Amen. You ought to let it go. Tell somebody, I said, let it go. There's so much upon you that you have to realize that if some things are not designed for you to carry. You got to be able to talk to the Lord and have to know that he will work it out. Don't allow your burdens to drain you and cause you uh, to have weariness. But weariness, it does not occur instantly. It occurs over time. It occurs like a leaking faucet. It's not the one drop, it's the multiplicity of drops that ultimately cause our reservoir to be full and overflow. Yes, Continue doing well, sowing spiritual seed in spite of the burdens of challenges, chaos, confusion, conflict, concerns, crisis, and calamity. Don't get to the point where after you sow good seed, you want to quit before the harvest. Don't get to the point that you've done so much that now you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you miss your blessing because you give up before your blessing show up. You, you, you give up, amen, before your healing show up. You, you give up before your breakthrough show up. How many know that he's a burden bearer and a heavy load share? So the text says, be not weary in well-doing. In other words, it says, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thy enemies against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as they hurt. So what it is saying is, is that don't get discouraged and you doing well because it seems like everybody else is ahead of you. Amen. Just continue to do what you do and let the Lord fight your battle. It says delight yourself in the Lord and 
he would give you the desires of your heart. So whatever we do, we ought to do it out of delight for the Lord. Do I have a witness? It says, in due season, just about to due season. Due season may not be your time, it may not be my time, but it's the Lord's time. It's called divine time. And some writers say he may not come when you want him, but how do you know that he is? He's always on time. It's due season, it's the right season. He will be there at the right time. He says, you will reap. That's a promise, that's a promise, if you don't give up first. If you don't give up first, you will give, you will reap. So as you have opportunity, keep helping somebody else. Here's the pivotal question of the day. Here's the pivotal question of the day that I want you to take notes on. Why do the faithful few grow weary in the fight to finish strong? Can I share with you why sometimes we grow weary? Here's number one. Here's number one. Do it for others what you're not doing for yourself first. Amen. Do it for others what you're not doing for yourself first will cause you to grow weary. I did not say do not do for others, but do not do it because you want them to do it for you. Y'all missed that, y'all missed that. Do not do what you're doing for somebody else because you want them to do it for you. It is unhealthy. For well, when you do not get back what you gave, you will end up, check this out, upset, regret that you got it, and vengeful. Because I was there for you. Where are you for me? But in the end of the day, amen, what you do, you ought to do for the Lord's sake. Because there are times when you are served it will not be mutual. There are some friends that are not mutual. That, that when it comes to ministry, ministry may not always be mutual. And when you minister to people, they may or may not minister back to you. But when you do it as unto the Lord, God will take care of you. So make sure that whatever you do, amen, for somebody else, and then you do it for yourself first. In other words, in other words, stop trying to bless somebody when you need help yourself. Yeah. yeah. See, see, pride set in. You need to understand the difference between pride and humility. Here, here, here's pride. Pride cares about who is right. Humility cares about what is right. When your pride set in, you will argue about you right versus somebody else right. But when you begin to humble yourself, it doesn't matter if you're right or I'm right. What matters is what right is done. So don't do for others what you are not first doing for yourself. It is unhealthy. Do it simply because it's the way you are. It's how you grow. Y'all are guessing. Yeah, yeah. Do it secondly as unto the Lord. But if you experience an emergency on an airplane, they will simply tell you, please put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you try to help somebody else. Most of us, most of us are feeling a sense of weariness because we've been trying to help somebody else. And we didn't need ourselves. Amen. You got to first get in a position uh, where you can support yourself before you can help somebody else. Here's the idea, though, is don't stay in that position where you only support yourself. Amen. Then you become self -fish. And that's the difference between being selfless and selfish. It's called self care. Yeah, somebody needs to take note. Somebody take note. That is selfless. That is selfish. And then that is self. You, 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 you got to reach a point where you, amen, you understand how to take care of yourself first. I don't know. I don't know what you need to do to relax, but you might need to, amen, turn on some soft music to help me somebody. You, 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 might, you might need to get you an apple and a glass of water. I need to take a hot bubble. I, I don't know, amen. I don't, I don't know, but you all take some time when you said this is a me day. This is a me day. It's a me day. It's not that I don't care about me. 
confused, but I didn't first care about mine. You're growing weary because you're trying to do for somebody else what you have not done for yourself. I, I don't even want nobody to love me that don't even love himself. I'm very skeptical of people that say, I love you to death. That's okay, you You really don't have to love me to death, people. When somebody tell you that, you better take them literally. Because the next thing they say is, I can't have it.
Yeah. Seem yeah. like they don't even want to cut the grass, help me somebody. Yeah. Seem, seem like they don't even want to take out the trash. Yeah. Amen. You on your job, seem like don't nobody want to show up on time. Yeah. Seem like don't nobody want to do their part. And you carrying the load, amen. And you doing, amen, their work and your work also. And there's a sense of apathy, amen. They lack concern, they lack interest, yes, amen. They talk about love. They talk about unity. They talk about commitment. And they're the main ones that don't show up. They're the main ones that don't get involved. They're comfortable where you are. Don't rock the boat. The Bible calls them lukewarm. They neither hot nor cold. The Bible said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Because you need to be, amen, either hot. A cold. So the question is, who's on the Lord's side? You worry about who's on your side and whose side somebody else is on. The real question is, who's on the Lord's side? Here's number three, here's number four, here's number four. Criticism of others can cause you to grow weary. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to do the best you can and people are not concerned, they are criticizing, they are comparing, and they are condemning. Yes. You, you ever seen people that don't have nothing? Good to say they jokingly, amen. They jokingly say what they really think. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they say certain things like, we don't do it that way. We've never done it that way before. Or we, amen, never have tried that. And sometimes people that are real critical is because they have issues themselves. Well, yeah. let them talk yeah. knowing that no weapon oh. formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rides up against your judgment shall be condemned. I, I would be remiss to tell you about the things that cause you to grow weary and not tell you the things that give you strength for today yeah. and bright hope for tomorrow. Yeah. The things that cause you and I to hold on and hang in there until, amen, we receive our blessings. Amen. Because so many of us have come so far by faith. Amen. So many of us have come through many dangers, toils, and snares. Amen. So many of us have come through so many ups and downs, and sickness, and sorrows, and heartaches, and headaches, and pains, and problems. So many of us have gone through so much. But the reason why God brought you through, amen, is so that he can bless you. Amen. But don't you get through on the other side. Amen. And turn back before you get your blessing. Amen. So then let me share with you three things from the text that make sense in terms of what he's saying. Do not be weary in well doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. The whole key is to understand that the reaping process that has to do with the sowing. He says, if you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. If you sow to the flesh of the flesh, you shall reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit of the spirit, you shall reap everlasting life. Be not conceived, but God is not mocked. There was a man sowing, that shall he also reap. Then the very next verse says, be not weary. And well doing. Yeah. Because if you sow the right thing, the right thing will come back to you. Here's the three things I want to share with you in the last minute that I have. Number one, the purpose in planting. But if you do not sow nothing, you cannot expect it. But the purpose is planting. Here is now, the purpose of planting is for a personal reward. You do not plant for nobody else. You're not planting grass for them to see your grass. You're not planting fruit for them to see your fruit. You plant, amen, fruit. You plant vegetables so you can eat. What we do and how we treat people has to do with our personal reward because it's not how people treat me that really count, it's how I treat them. Amen. Amen. So I treat them good because I want to hear them say at the end of the dark, at the end of the day, that I have a personal reward. Therefore, I want to hear them say, Well done. Reason why. Amen. Giving up the right for the wrong. The reason why I keep loving people that you know don't love you. The reason why you keep trying to do good. Because I want to hear him say, well done. Yeah. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up, I think you're cool over there. That touch on my face is personal. It's in my heart. It's in my mind. It's in my spirit that I got to treat people right no 
matter how they treat you. Somebody shout amen. amen. You got to know it. Everybody ever got to know that just because a dog got his eyes closed. Yeah. Doesn't mean that. See, just because somebody don't say nothing back to you, just because they don't treat you back the way you treat them, does not mean that they don't know what you said and done. It just means that they planted good seeds. And they trying to get their reward. Here's the reason why. The purpose of planting is not for today, but it's for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a future intent that what we plant today, we should have reaped. Check this out. And it's never a one-to-one -one ratio. You will always reap more than you plant. So then when you plant, you spread good. You spread, amen, great. So that great will come back your way. Amen. Here's number two. I got to close. Here's number two. Is, 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 is that is that be not weary and well doing for in due season you will reap if you faint not. You got to understand the purpose of you planting is so that you will have a future. Amen. If you eat your seed today, you will not eat tomorrow. Lord, but if you plant your seed today, then you'll have enough of tomorrow. Check it out and to share with somebody else. If you take your whole shake and spin it today, you will not have nothing for a rainy day. Uh, if you don't learn how to invest, if you are simply a consumer and all you know how to do is spin, you will not have nothing for tomorrow. The idea is to be able to hear this now. When we were little, we ate this candy, and this candy is called now and later. Amen. You got to take your check and spend something now, but save something for you. Because just as sure as the sun is shining, it's going to rain. But it's okay if it rains if you got an umbrella. It's okay if it rains if you got some Colossians. It's okay if it rains you got, amen, a rain coat. Because you made the proper investment that even if the job lay off helping somebody else, even if people stop blessing you, even if whatever happened, let it happen. I'll be all right because I've invested in the kingdom of God. I've planted in the kingdom of God. I didn't know that God will take care of you. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I didn't know that he'll add. Not only will he add, but will he multiply? Shout yes! Here's number two. Here's number two. In due season. That's about to do season. Ah, uh, it's your season. It's your season. In due season, that you will reap if you faith not. Here's the second thing. You got to be patient in the process. You got to know the purpose of planning, but you got to be patient in the process because the Bible calls it seed time and harvest. And there's a period between the seed and the harvest called time. And it's not our time, but it is a chaos time. It's a divine time. It's just like planting a tree by the rivers of water. If you plant a tree by the rivers of water, it'll bring forth its fruit in and whatsoever it does shall prosper. When is your season, everything will go right. When is your season, will nothing, amen, go wrong. When is your season, it will all line up and you'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. But tell somebody that you got to wait on the Lord. There's a time period that you can't plant today. This is not the lottery. You can't plant today and get something today. You got to put something in and let it simmer. You got such a microwave. Amen. Uh, 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 they don't know about the crock pot. Amen. Uh, uh, they don't know about the slow cooker. So somebody said, some things take time. I heard somebody say, for a second, good thing come to those. It's good to be able to go in there and throw together a meal in a minute. It's good to be able to to prepare some quick fat and hurt. It's good to be able to drive through the drive through and get some quick fat and hurt. But you can't cook collard greens in a minute. It takes some. But when you finish, do I have any witnesses? It'll sustain you. It'll maintain you. It'll hold you. It'll keep you. But you gotta be patient while it is simple. You gotta be patient while it's boiling. You gotta be patient while it's baking. Because when it come out, it'll come out ready for you. You are the same way. You going through what you're going through. Heartache and headaches, trials and tribulations. 
change this, I gotta go. I gotta change this real quick. The other day I was in the doctor's office and I had surgery. I said in the lobby, I said in the lobby. I arrived at 8.30 and it was 10.30. And they had not called my name. I said to myself, Lord, I'm about to fail this patient test. I already know I'm about to fail this patient test. I've been here since 8.30. I said, I don't want to mess up because they still got to do the surgery. And I went up there for life and spoke to the lady. She said, well, the doctor is behind, don't worry. I came back and said, well, good. I don't want to rush the doctor when it comes to somebody else because I don't want the doctor to rush when it comes to me. But about 30, 45 minutes later, the anxiety kicked in again.
I don't know what you need today, but I'm asking you to help me preach to others. I need for you to help me preach to you. Amen. Lift your voice. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. Until my, Until my whatever you need, amen. amen. Show up. Yours may be healing, say, until my healing show up. Yours may be deliverance, say, until my deliverance show up. Yours may be a financial blessing, until my financial blessing. Yours may be, yours may be peace, and say, until my peace show up. But whatever it is, I'm not going to give up. Until my blessing show up. You, you, you come too far. You do many dangers. Toys and stand. And you've been through hell and high water. All kind of devilishness. And yet he kept you. Don't you give up now. God, I didn't want you to give up now. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray that it would simmer in our minds and in our hearts. Long after this service is over. But as we go through whatever we're going through, we know that we will reap them if we don't give up first. You promised us, God. You promised us, God, that we will persevere until the promise is fulfilled. Thank you in advance. Give us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Never to leave. Never, never. Come short of his word. I got a fast. Stay in the feel well. Come on.
all that I desire for believers who have fellowship with God and one another. Jesus said, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he come. So again, therefore, we amen. We need to make sure that we remember the price that was paid that we may have eternal life. The body was battered, beaten, bruised, but never broken. His blood was shed, not accidentally, but on purpose, that we may have forgiveness of sin, remission, removal. Paul says to the church in 1 Corinthians, I receive the Lord that which I deliver unto you the same night in which Jesus was betrayed to the great place then. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, for this is my body which is given for you. And all that as you and at the same time he took the cup and said, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. But as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show what the Lord's death did come. Let a man examine himself, so let it be, and so let it drink. Whosoever eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto his own self. So, so many sleep and so many are sick among them because of sin. So let us pray that God who is faithful will always forgive. So let us remember, let us reflect, and let us always realize that if it had not been for the price that was paid, have to pay that price ourselves. And we have a debt that we have to pay. Jesus paid it all. Minister so Murray will lead us in a word of prayer. You, if you would prepare yourself to take of the Lord's cup after the Christ says, Minister so Murray.
ready to go. How many know that I feel better? Uh -huh. Much better. Yeah. Since I laid my burdens down, I still get in the way that cause you to get weary and give up. Let me do some acknowledgments and then I'm out. But I'm always grateful. I missed her last time, but I promise not to miss her this time. Amen. Born and raised right here in True Life. I always make her way back when she's in town. Good to see Erica. Amen. Bless you. We're always proud of our young people when we've invested in them and they go away and come back. Amen. They come back as millionaires. I mean, they come back as. <laughs> I'll tell y'all this, I always got a story, but well, thank you so much for others that are here in terms of spring break. But there's a gentleman named Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders is one of the leading running back football players in the NFL. Broke so many records. Back in the middle of the 80s, he was the first one to sign a bonus. He's the first one to sign a bonus. Now they sign a bonus for 20, 30 million. But he's the first one to sign a bonus, and it was for $1 million. And he held out. And he refused to sign unless he got that bonus. And many frowned on him. And many looked at him like, who do you think you are? You want a one million dollar bonus? And what would you get? He held out, he held out until they gave him the one million dollar up front. And then he turned around and gave it to his little small church in Alabama. Amen. The whole one million dollars. The whole one million dollars. So I love to acknowledge all the young people that <laughs> somebody go, somebody go, amen. Oh, somebody, yeah. All these, all these favorite people started right in the church, amen. So we won't ever forget it's an investment, so we thank you for that. I want to say thanks to the people that supported. Last week we served over 300 people in our food ministry. All of you see this in the right what a big day we had. Then last but not least, I need to acknowledge this because of what's gonna happen next month. So I need to, amen, I need to acknowledge it this month. So let me acknowledge again all those that have a birthday in April because May is coming. I mean, let me just celebrate April right now. Let me just celebrate. <laughs> Come on, give them a round of applause. April, please stand so that if you're in April, they'll know who is in tribe, amen. 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 You need to know who is your tribe. Amen. Sarah, are you standing? Amen. You're not standing, are you? Sarah, Sarah? You? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I think they have ice cream and cake for you outside. Amen. So go outside and get ice cream and cake. Amen. Praise God for you. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's get ready to go six by eight and tell them to give up before your blessing show up. Shout amen. God bless you. Amen. 